of our divine mother from the book the mother from the collective works of the divine mother volume 14 page 45 topic tapasya a divine mother says a discipline imposed by the will for any spiritual end is tapasya tapasya is a discipline aiming at the realization of the divine mental tapasya says a divine mother mental tapasya is the process leading to the goal vital tapasya is the vital that undergoes a rigorous discipline in order to transform itself integral tapasya says our divine mother integral tapasya the whole being lives only to know and to serve the divine perfect tapasya says our divine mother perfect tapasya is that which will reach its goal No life can be successful without self-discipline says our divine mother No life can be successful without self-discipline to be a man discipline is indispensable without discipline one is only an animal one begins to be a man only when one aspires to a higher and truer life and when one accepts a discipline of transformation for this one must start by mastering one's lower nature and its desires date 9th march 1972 A divine mother says it can be said that all discipline whatsoever if it is followed strictly sincerely deliberately is of considerable help for it makes the earthly life reach its goal more rapidly and prepares it to receive the new life to discipline oneself is to hasten the arrival of this new life and the contact with the supramental reality next topic ascetic practices our divine mother says the true attitude is neither to be an ascetic nor to indulge in desire the true attitude is to take in all simplicity what i give to be perfectly satisfied with it and neither to ask for more nor to refuse what is given this is the true example to give the one that can help the others towards a better understanding of their duties as sadhaks a divine mother says remain my child simple quiet and content and all will be all right a divine mother says a sanyasi who makes demands is not sincere to be sincere a sanyasi must be perfectly satisfied with what is given to him and ask for nothing more in all that happens to him he must see the divine's grace and be at once happy and grateful for it moreover he who wants to do intensive sadhana must be able to isolate himself from his surroundings and if necessary to sit in deep meditation even on a battlefield in the midst of the roaring guns a divine mother says i do not believe that sadhana in the cave is easy only there the insincerity remains hidden while in life and action it is revealed you can look like a yogi in a cave but in life the humbugging is more difficult because you have to behave like a yogi 6th september 1935 question by a child Sweet mother when i consider the seriousness of this type of severe sadhana the idea of my physical and mental weakness begin to frighten me and i find little courage in me 
for this our divine mother says one thing we want to know is how much you are eating and whether you are sleeping regularly and sufficiently these two points are of greater importance for a sadhana of this kind demands in order to bear it that the mind and body and nervous system should not be weakened by undernourishment and lack of sleep it is not by fasting but by improving the will that one obtains the truth a divine mother says you said x was doing mischief with the children because in your mind the idea of sadhana is associated with quietness stillness and meditation but the more you stay here the more you will have to realize that it is not only in meditation that one can reach the divine consciousness you will learn that one can remain in contact with the divine even while playing or gymnastics or walking or doing anything at every moment you should remember the divine and try to remain in the divine consciousness 31st August 1953 and divine mother says here sensibleness is indispensable and the integral yoga is based on balance calm peace and not on any unhealthy need to suffer as long as it is an austerity there are reactions when it becomes an imperative need it is good if the need is a true one the means to do it will come spontaneously question sweet mother how should i spend some time in solitude a divine mother says it is in the old methods of yoga which demands silence and solitude the yoga of tomorrow is to find the divine in work and in relation with the world look within yourself reflect upon it and tell me what your choice is a divine mother says according to my experience people fall into tamas when they go into solitude to be by oneself very much needs a certain force of inner life it may be better to vary solitude with some kind of its opposite but each has its advantages and disadvantages and it is only by being vigilant and keeping an inner poise that one can avoid the later entire physical retirement is seldom healthy although a temporary retirement is often helpful but the main thing is inner detachment and complete turning to the divine next topic concentration Our divine mother says the moment that stores up and concentrate is no less needed than the moment that spreads and diffuses 13th April 1935 I divine mother says concentration does not aim for any effect but is simple and persistent concentration on a precise goal is helpful to development the more we concentrate on the goal the more it blossoms forth and becomes precise the yogi knows by his capacity for a containing or dynamic identity with things and persons and forces 11th april 1935 question by a child sweet mother knowledge can only come by conscious identity for that is the only true knowledge existence aware of itself by sri aurobindo could you explain this to me for this our divine mother says there is always some kind of unconscious identification with the surrounding people and things but by will and practice one can learn to concentrate on somebody or something and to get consciously identify with this person or this thing and through this identification you know the nature of the person or the thing nothing is impossible for one who is attentive It is said that the faculty of concentrated attention is at the source of all successful activity. Indeed, the capacity and value of a man can be measured by his capacity of concentrated attention. In order to obtain this concentration, it's generally recommended to reduce one's activities, to make a choice and confine oneself to this choice alone so as not to disperse one's energy and attention. 
For the normal man, this method is good and sometimes even indispensable, but one can imagine something better. These are the words of our Divine Mother.